You're off the screen, Melody. Oh, I'm relaxing. <laughs> I forgot we're at work. Please, can you stop? It's not work. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Simon of Savage Reads and today I'm joined by the delightful Melanie Sykes. Oh, right, yeah. Hello everybody. Because <laughs> we're going to be talking about Laura Purcell's Bone China, our latest book club pick. But just in case any of you are wondering how are you two allowed to be in a room together at the moment, we're actually recording something secret that's work. Yeah, but this is work. Well, I think it's fun actually, Melanie. Well, yeah. Let's all move on. <laughs> this is such hard work. <laughs> Let's talk about Bone China. Yeah, do you want to start? I will. So, I, well, I wanted to start with kind of saying, let's talk about what the book's about. But I'm still a tiny bit confused. I know, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> and I loved it in a lot of parts. Yes. But as we'll talk about it more, more yeah. there were certain bits where I was like, oh, hang on a minute. Because basically the idea is that it's about Hester Y, who has fled the household she was working in, has gone to, and I want to say this right, Morvoran House mm -hmm. um, in Cornwall, where she's kind of trying to start a new life, but she has a big secret. And as we learn more about the people in the house, there's other secrets that then we go back in time for too. Yeah. Without giving anything away. Yeah, well I don't done. want to give too much away. Yes. But... Mm. I struggled with the back and forth. I did, because it was, well, there was one bit where it was obvious they were going back because it's a page saying 40 years before. Yeah. So you know. There's a clue. There's a big clue. But sometimes it did flip and flop and you didn't, you weren't really kind of ready for it. And it's such different, it's a di completely different picture. Yeah. Because you're in a house and then you're in a cave. Yes. It was like, wow. The back of the book talks about Louise Pinecroft and it being her story. But I got confused in the off because I felt like it was Hester's. Now, one thing that excites me when I open a book, sounds quite weird to say that. Sure. I get really excited when you've got a cast of characters. Oh, yes. I like that. Oh, I missed that. Maybe. But <laughs> you needed it, I think, though. So that's what I felt like. I felt like, actually, if I hadn't had this, I would have struggled more. Because I will say, so this is sounding already negative, and I don't mean to, I think the writing is beautiful oh so do i i think she writes so beautifully and and it's this kind of gothic haunting historical i mean but she's also really funny when she yeah. describes characters i mean she can be quite cutting and sarcastic and really funny so i liked those moments yes yeah. no i totally agree i love yeah. things like calling people cakey yes <laughs> and all the sort of What's the loquilism? That's the one. Yes. That's me. Lo Localism. <laughs> there was one bit where she she describes the cook as looking like the ham that she was preparing, <laughs> which I just thought was brilliant. So bitchy. <laughs> there are a lot of characters, and I sometimes got very confused which household because because in essence, to get not to spoil things, you're with Hester in Louise Pinecroft's house after an incident where she saves a man. Mm -hmm. There's a lot in the book. That's Isn't the other thing. There's a lot going on. And then suddenly you're in this new house, you meet all those characters. You go back to Hanover Square, meet all those characters. You're back in the house. Then you go back 40 years ago and suddenly you're in a cave. And <laughs> But you know what I mean? Yeah. It is, it's quite... I found that quite tricky to keep up with sometimes. Now, I'll tell you why I think one of the reasons why I found it difficult to keep up with i had an other issue going on as well because i don't like horror yeah now this was billed as you know you might have to put the light on when you sleep so for me i was reading it it felt like the equivalent of hiding behind my sofa and every time i turned the page i was dreading that i might get scared i'm laughing with you yes i know <laughs> but it's but it's absolutely factually true i'm lying in bed just sitting because i always read in bed I, I really struggle to read anywhere else to be honest and, unless obviously i'm out and about but basically i i was fearful of getting to that page that was going to mess me up and i wasn't going to be able to sleep so i was having that drama as well as trying to absorb the drama and and then I decided, you know what, I can only read this in the daytime. So I honestly, I was reading it in little spurts yeah. as well, which what, didn't help. I think what she does do this brilliant though is, and you mentioned that, is that she there's a lot of foreshadowing and she does this really clever thing where she will get you at the end of a chapter you want to read on. So mm -hmm. even though sometimes I was like, I don't know where I am, but I'm still really enjoying yeah. the ride. Yeah. She uses a lot of riffs from historical fiction doesn't she like you've got i don't know does she oh yeah tell me tell me oh a good gothic tale because you've got like um 
there's the whole kind of scene with the fainting and the blood. I don't mm -hmm. want to give too much away with that one. Then you've got the potential poisoning. Yeah. You've got, so there's kind of all of these dark moments in it. But I did feel like it was being crammed in. I felt like it was two books and yes, possibly I, should have been two books. Yeah, I, agree. I would definitely agree with that. I thought the opening was good. I thought the opening was brilliant. That journey from London to Cornwall and it, it, sort of the reveal that actually she's kind of on the run. Yeah. You think, oh, fantastic. We're in here. It was like, and we're off. You and know? you also know somebody's going to catch up with her later. You know yeah. that whole incident where she basically saves a man's life. It's at the beginning, so it's not a big spoiler. Yeah. Um, but you know at some point that's going to catch her up. Yeah. And indeed it does yeah. in a really, really unexpected way. I mm -hmm. really enjoyed that. Hester is quite a tricky character. She likes a gin. I mean, this I loved it about her, that she's an alcoholic. I mean, a bit of Lord I, 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 The Laudanum. Have you, did you Google Laudanum? <laughs> have you had any Laudanum recently, <laughs> Simon? Do you know what's in it? No. Opium morphine and codeine wow so no wonder she was on that because it sounds fantastic <laughs> but i had to google it because it was all all the way through it she kept having a little bit of it a little bit there and i was like gotta know what that's about so yeah it's proper cocktail of loveliness <laughs> it is but also i love the fact that in, with all of this she makes her unreliable mm. and i love an unreliable narrator yeah oh yeah that's yeah that's interesting isn't it yeah you do have that thing where you're like do i trust this yes. person do i not is she telling the truth why has she got what she's got which again we won't spoil let's get sapphic because did you not find that there was like a bit of a lesbian undertone? Is that what sapphic with... means? Yeah. God, I didn't know that. Oh. oh, I love it when I learn a new word. Let's see how many times you can get that into a conversation this sapphic. week. Sapphic. Oh my God, I really like that word. Yeah, is sapphic. It, it, which is derived from I think, what? Isn't it saf the poem, the poet, saf? Ooh. Oh my God, you're like... making me want to go and research. <laughs> I'm sure sapphic is lesbian love. Oh my God, I love can I just say, and I'm sorry, I've got to look at my paper here and have my glass on because basically it's blurred. There was another word that I found in there because I do like learning a new word. It is very, very exciting. And in the book, heterochromia. What does it mean? Tell us. One blue eye and one brown eye. So one of the characters had that. And I was like, I didn't know what it meant. So I Googled it and I get that excited. Finding out new things. I didn't know this is based on historical facts. People genuinely thought that if you treated people with consumption in a cave, in cave air only, it would cure them. Yeah. And that's why this doctor does all this weird stuff, no spoilers. Um, I love finding out facts about things like that. Well, it gives it a whole level of interest at the moment because we're actually living with a disease. Are we? <laughs> <laughs> that's no. news to me. <laughs> But I actually... thought the distance was the restraining <laughs> order. I didn't realise it was something else. Actually, Sorry. can we rewind and go back to the lesbian stuff? Yeah, of course Please, we can. Please, because we, we, we just moved on from it. And actually, I want to go back to it. I miss that completely. So there's some lesbian I overtones. I felt Hester got far too involved in different, in her mistress's lives. I just felt like, particularly back in Hanover Square, she like when she gets into her oh. bath water mm. and when she like is she becomes really obsessed with him. He's always talking about how well her husband wanted to spend time with her. Now that to me mm. like a crush. Yeah. She had crushes on these people. There was something un underlying. Right. Okay. Yes, I see that now. But then I'm always a bit worried that I've turned into my husband who thinks that everyone's gay. They're just pretending they're not. <laughs> you know what though? I spoke to a lesbian friend of mine and she said to me that uh, what did she say straight women are like spaghetti you get them wet and they bend <laughs> we don't have to use it but that's what she said to me and it just made me laugh so yeah who knows how does this always happen with <laughs> us <laughs> every time every time it gets filthy please do write in if you agree <laughs> comments down below as always we love it <laughs> One of the things that I loved was yes. lots and lots of secrets. And I love a book with secrets. Right. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. I'm, I'm glad you did. I'm really happy for it. <laughs> Are you a fan of books with lots no, of secrets? No. Oh. I like everything out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Do you know what? It depends how much it's... it's um, it, it depends how involved I am. Because if, if there's too much hidden, I, I lose interest. <laughs> We don't have a Miss Marple with us today. <laughs> no, if we were ever a private detective team, I have a feeling I might do the work. <laughs> you would. I'll 
I'll do the driving. Don't worry about okay, it. Okay, we're all sorted. Then. <laughs> I'm glad we're understanding our relationship so swiftly. But does that frustrate you? Because yeah, there are also, so many secrets in this. A, there are, but also, like, I'm still confused about many elements of it as well, because the willow pattern thing, the whole willow pattern thing was like, what was that about? It was the contents of the china that I found. I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but that was quite odd to me. Because it's what the china's made up of, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes. And that I found, when that happened, I did a, huh? <laughs> I couldn't work out whether Laura Purcell was trying to keep us confused because that keeps you reading and you want to yeah. kind of find out. Not, not even confused, that's the wrong word. I wonder if she wanted to just keep us intrigued and keep yes. you guessing. But for me, it left me feeling a little bit confused. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely am the same with it. But I do think she did, she does write some really hold your breath tense moments as well. She's very good at that. I think the first half of the book for me was like, 10 out of 10. That, yeah. that for me was so good. I agree. And then when we went back 40 years, I suddenly was like, yeah. hang on a minute, why are we not going back to the other house? And what, how are we going to... And I think because there's with Louise and Hester's stories being so brimming with secrets and them wanting to both almost be two main characters, you therefore don't quite get enough of either. I, 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 I know I sound like I'm just... So, repeating everything you say but I agree I when I first started reading it it bounced along it's bouncing along and I was really enjoying well, you it you messaged me didn't you yeah, like, and, oh said, oh my God, so yeah. Much. and then that it happened that you know 40 years before and I just sort of I lost my mojo a little bit for it but like I say the ele there's so many elements of it that were enjoyable I mean the writing itself is beautiful yeah it's really, really bloody lovely. The book is definitely gripping. I have to say, the atmosphere. I was just about to talk to you about the atmosphere. The Over sea. To you. Well, no, it's just the you, the sea was the soundtrack to it. You know, the wind and and the the elements outside the house in Cornwall. It really, it really was the soundtrack to it. You could absolutely hear it and be there. And her descriptions of it were were stunning. You know, so I thought I thought that was wonderful too. And I loved the sort of initial mentions of potential like mermaids or fairies. Yeah. Now the fairy story kind of comes more to the fore. Again, no spoilers. I know. Um, and But there were certain moments with that where I got really chilled. Like, you know, when she can hear things outside mm. or the, like she'll suddenly mention there'll be a scream. Or, and I loved those moments because I got that. <gasps> and the way she describes the moors reminded me of um, The Hound of the Baskervilles. Okay. Which is one of my favourite books. I've not read before. that one. <gasps> you need to. The book has this sort of supernatural element to it. What are your thoughts on supernatural elements in fiction in general? I'm, I'm not great with things that aren't realistic. She's not into secrets and she's not into supernatural. <laughs> so this book was a very bad choice by me. No, I just, <laughs> it's not tangible and therefore I struggle with it. I understand that it's fiction, it's fantasy and all. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know. Is that a technical term? <laughs> yeah, do you get me? I mean, I say that, but for example, I read the Lord of the Rings trilogy and I bloody loved that. I've and there's nothing, ten you've never read it. No. I read them when I was 30 because my, my husband at the time was like, God, I can't believe you haven't read and, uh, them. And I did. And I absolutely got absorbed. So so I guess what I'm, t what I'm saying is kind of a nonsense. I just maybe just didn't dig yeah. this. I think for me, it was an element that I liked the, the way it made you feel a bit chilled. Someone mentioned to me on Twitter that this book you could feel cold. When she describes that you're in a cold room, you do. And I can do it now when I think about how she's got everything weirdly, this sounds really odd, had kind of a blue tinge to it. I felt oh. like the whole book had this kind of dark, bluey. Oh, that's really interesting. Is that weird? No. No, I don't think it is, because it, it, well, like, she, the like, what, she the writes The men with white coats are here, Simon, <laughs> they're coming. <laughs> No, 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 you were obviously transported by it. And actually, me talking about the Lord of the Rings has, has no relevance to it because Lord of the Rings at least is, it's in a different land. This is yeah. this is in reality, but with like fairy dust. And I'm not buying it. <laughs> Sorry, Laura, if you see this. Oh, no, it's, it's just, it's called pixie lead, isn't it? Pixie lead. Is that another euphemism for lesbianism? No, I'm joking. <laughs> how many of them can we get? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, how many of them can we get in? Oh, no. no. Now, did it scare you? Did you feel scared no, because, by it? I didn't. I, don't, I didn't. Because Cause I, I read it in the daytime with all the lights on. <laughs> I read it in the daytime. I read it in little bits. I, so I never got scared. I did get chilled by it, but I think it was for me, it was that, that halfway point where things changed. Now, it's been very much compared to De Maurier. Mm. I don't know how much I agree with that. Well, I've only read Rebecca. 
What have you read? Have you read all of them? No, oh God, no. I'd oh, love right. to have, but I've read Rebecca, my cousin Rachel, which is like the original Gone Girl. I, I know which the story is because amazing. I've seen the film of that. Yeah. yeah. That's um, brilliant. Rebecca is one of my all-time favourite books, yeah, like, mate. ever. I felt like the comparison for me was it was set in Cornwall. And that was where it ended. And it's gothic. Yeah. And I think she writes beautifully. You're off the screen, Bella. Oh, I'm relaxing. <laughs> Forgot we're at work. Please, can you stop? It's not work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where do you say? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Back in the room. Um, There's no romance in it. No. Was there a romance? Not... I missed it if there was. No, but don't it... tell me there was a lesbian relationship that I just don't. In Rebecca, there is. <laughs> no, I meant this. Oh. Maybe that sapphic undertone that I saw is a bit Rebecca y, because yeah. I definitely think Danvers, <laughs> Danvers wanted to make spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> and because I love Daphne de Maurier's writing so much, as soon as someone says, de Maurier, I ask, I'm like, come on then show me that you really are yeah like and that's not fair on the book it's not fair on the writer but, and i think also i because i chose this um as i read and i think i put a lot of i am gonna she's one of those authors who i've bought all three of her books and be like i'm gonna love this author she's gonna be my favorite new author and that's actually a lot of pressure from me as a reader yeah. putting that onto the book yeah 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 absolutely no <laughs> I'm most scared to ask you this question. Go on. Do you like secrets? Do you like secrets? No, no. <laughs> okay. How do you feel about books <laughs> that move times like that? Oh, that I'm fine with that. Okay. Well, I think that's what, I mean, most books do, don't they? They don't all go from in one line, do no. they? So I, that doesn't bother me at all. If they do it too much, then it gets confusing. Um, but mostly, yeah, I mean, they pretty much all books do. What about you? I like, I really, really like it. And that was one of the things that I did like about this. Yeah. It was just the fact that one of them went back and we were in the cave, as I keep talking about. I've told Melanie, I used to be a cave guy, so I felt very at home. <laughs> I was a bit like, what was it? Well, we were in a cave, what's going on here then? <laughs> also, what a place to have shenanigans. Oh, I don't know. I, got, I don't know. I got the idea of that outside. But you're outside, but you're inside. Oh, great. <laughs> Once again, Simon and Melanie talking about <laughs> sex. It's just a thing. I, I do like authors toying with you a bit. I think it's when you feel like you're not, you can't. And I felt like maybe this is my issue. I couldn't have guessed the ending. Right. And I felt like the author was purposefully not letting you guess the ending. Well, I didn't. I'm still confused. The blooper reel for this is going to be longer than the actual <laughs> video. Graham Sillers, who's, who always sends in brilliant, brilliant questions. And I have to say, we had, did have two questions, one on Gothic and one on... But I'm recording on the phone that the messages are on. So this is my fault. Apologies <laughs> to everyone. I'll be better next month. And we'll both be better at actually telling you what we're reading in advance next month as well. It's been a time. It's a pandemic. Anyway. <laughs> um, but Graham says, asked us, as we round this discussion off about the ending, mm. because the ending, he said, was very abrupt. Yes. And did we feel there was, like, room for a sequel? Now, I didn't feel there could be room for a sequel because of what happens to one of the characters, no spoilers. But also, I didn't feel... I don't need everything to be stitched up in a perfect bow, but I do like some sort of resolution, and I don't know if I kind of got that with this You felt book. it was lacking that at the end. Yes. Yeah. A little but bit. But mostly you enjoyed it? Overall, yeah, I would say I enjoyed it. I think her writing is really, really good. And I kind of, I'm desperate to go back to the Silent Companions and the courses and then to be brilliant as well. But what about you? Would you read us Laura Purcell in the future one day? I, in one day, I absolutely will revisit, for sure. So what's <laughs> our next one? It's my choice. It's called I Am An Island by Tamsin Kalidas. I think that's how you say it. Kalidas, Kalidas. I have started and it's phenomenal. Maybe, do we do a Christmassy one for December? What are your thoughts on Christmas books? Well, the ultimate one is A Christmas Carol. I've never read that. Oh, you have to. Because any adaptation you have ever seen about it does not beat the book. Really? The book is incredible. I made myself read it about, I don't know, five years ago, because I thought, I can't believe I've never read that one. That's just a classic. I've seen everything about it. And it's just brilliant oh so it is a must read wow <laughs> sorry i'm passionate about it because it really is i have phenomenal. an issue with dickens but we'll talk about that at another Ooh, point god intriguing right so, okay. there we go anyway on that cliffhanger <laughs> which is very out for this book um <laughs> we will speak to you all soon Bye. Bye.